Hi there! Welcome to The Passage. I'm Ben. I'm Claire. And we're the volunteer team. We help to manage and organise the 400 volunteers across the organisation, most of whom volunteer in primary services. Thank you for offering your support to our primary services. This team offers services to meet the basic needs of our clients, such as food, showers, laundry and clothing. Once these needs are addressed, it allows us to explore someone's circumstances and build a suitable support plan. Also at the Resource Centre, we have housing advisors, a reconnections worker, mental health and substance misuse teams, and an employment, training and welfare rights team. You will be helping to serve food at either breakfast or lunch times. Or if you're volunteering at the weekends, we run a brunch service from 8.30 till 12.30pm. We serve approximately 1,000 meals a week. If this is your first time volunteering in our kitchen, it is important that you watch this video. We will cover all the basics to get you through your first shift with us. Finding the right entrance to the passage can be tricky. Because of ongoing renovations, we'll be using this temporary entrance on King Scholars Passage behind the centre until at least spring 2016. And thereafter, using the main entrance on Carlisle Place. Don't forget to sign in as soon as you enter the building. It is important we know who is in the building in case of fire or an emergency. Ring the bells for attention. Someone will come up and let you in. Before coming to the passage, please remember to wear comfortable shoes, tie your hair back and remove any loose jewellery. Although you'll be given an apron, you may want to wear clothes you don't mind getting a little dirty. This is the staff and volunteers room. It is your space to make use of, so you may choose to take your break here, make a cup of tea or coffee, or debrief with your fellow volunteers after your shift. Don't forget to lock away your valuables in the lockers provided. Find the padlocks and keys to the lockers inside. If a key or padlock is missing, please tell one of the chefs. The toilets are situated either side of the stairwell, between the volunteers room and the kitchen. These stairs are your closest fire exit. You may need a key card to get through some of the doors in the building. A chef or your supervisor will be able to issue you with one. Please remember to, to return it once you've finished volunteering. You, you are, are now, now ready, ready to start, start your shift. shift. We'll quickly show you the kitchen and point out some main tasks that you'll be expected to complete during your shift. But don't worry if you forget, Claudette and Noor will be happy to answer any of your questions before or during service. Once you're in the kitchen, report to one of the chefs. There are two hand wash basins in the kitchen and one in the washing up area. It is very, very important that you wash your hands on entering the kitchen after going to the toilet, or having a break, or going for a cigarette. You must also wash your hands after handling raw meat, poultry or fish, and before handling ready-to-eat foods. Or just when they look a bit dirty. This is the cold and dry stores. These areas can be found as you enter the kitchen. You may be asked to collect things from these rooms during your shift. But be careful not to shut the door on anyone in the cold store. It can be a chilling and frightening experience. If you're unlucky enough to get shut in, don't panic. Press this button to release the door, Open the door slowly into the corridor and make your escape. This is the kitchen and the chef's domain, but you may be asked to help prep fruit and vegetables here. Ask the chef for the right knife and chopping board for the task. If you're unsure how to use a knife properly, please ask a chef. But watch your fingers and remember, never try to catch a falling knife. They're very sharp. The bread can usually be found in the cold store. Most meals are accompanied by some kind of bread. This is the area to toast and butter the bread before or during service. This is the serving area. One to three people can operate the serving area. Cereal and porridge is served at breakfast and soup at lunchtime. It could be your role to ladle the soup into bowls or to serve a selection of cereals. Breakfast tends to be a full English and lunch changes every day. Once clients have chosen enough grub, they pay for their meals at the till. It may be your role to operate the till. There is a price list for food available and food is very reasonably priced. We encourage people in receipt of benefits and income to take responsibility to manage their finances. If someone is unable to pay for any reason, they are able to get vouchers from staff to cover the cost of their meals. If someone hasn't got a voucher or money to pay, please find a nearby member of the hospitality team to speak to the client. There should be someone in the restaurant at all times. The till is not difficult to master. Simply press the no sale button and open the drawer. 
This is the tea and coffee area. You may be required to set up this area before service or see to it during service. Ask another volunteer or the chef to show you how to do it. Tea and coffee is free. Clients will ask for their preferred bevy of choice after they've been served their food. You could be asked to make tea or coffee for mobile tea and coffee trolleys around the passage. This is the client restaurant. It holds 70 people. People can relax here whilst they're waiting for an appointment or a meeting with staff. It's the role of the volunteers to keep this area clean and tidy and to make sure that it is ready for a meal service when the time comes. This is a table caddy. We need to make sure that these are stocked with wrapped cutlery, full and clean sauce bottles, plenty of salt and pepper and napkins. These need to be topped up at first thing in the morning and brought back to the service counter at the end of lunch service, ready for breakfast service the next day. Every day, the passage receives generous food donations from companies in the local area. We pass these on to clients free of charge. You may be asked to put these out before service. Just put fresh sandwiches, desserts, fruits and salads out. The rest can stay in the fridge. Once people have enjoyed their delicious meal, plates and cutlery should be placed on the trolley. It may be your role to collect these plates and take them to the washing up area. This is a busy door and there's a tiny step just the other side, so watch yourself. At lunch times, volunteers use a rota to organise themselves and to ensure that the tasks are distributed fairly. The rota looks like this. Please add yourself to the rota with help from other volunteers. You should only be dealing with three chemicals in the kitchen. This is washing up liquid. It is on a pump dispenser. Please don't throw away the pump when changing the bottle. The yellow spray is a general purpose cleaner that is suitable for use on any non-food contact surfaces. The purple spray is for food contact surfaces. Make sure the surface is clean and spray and wipe with blue paper. This is the washing up area. Dirty plates, pots and cutlery go this side. Pots and pans go this side. Normally two or three volunteers man this area. Dishes get rinsed with the hose and sent into the dishwasher for a deep clean. Most pots and pans are washed in a traditional way with plenty of elbow grease. Find rubber gloves, blue roll and tea towels here. There are two hand wash basins in the kitchen and one in the washing up area. It is very, very important that you wash your hands on entering the kitchen. After going to the toilet, or having a break, or going for a cigarette. You must also wash your hands after handling raw meat, poultry or fish, and before handling ready-to-eat foods. Or just when they look a bit dirty. Chopping boards are colour-coded to help prevent cross-contamination. Make sure to consult the charts near the board or ask one of the chefs. Please be careful when you need to lift anything. It is better to get help than try to manage by yourself. Remember to bend your knees, look forward and keep a straight back. We have gloves for washing up, gloves to serve food and gloves to protect your hands from hot surfaces. These can all be found in the washing up area. Spillages must be cleaned up as soon as possible and a wet floor sign put, put out. Everything can be found in the cleaning cupboard. Green equipment is to be used in the kitchen, blue equipment is to be used outside of the kitchen. The passage strives to be inclusive, encompassing a diverse and rich culture from among our members, clients, volunteers and staff. We actively work with others across all aspects of society, seeking to have influence and to be an advocate for homeless people. The passage seeks to be a place of hope, aspiration, change and innovation. We ask our volunteers to come on board with our ethos and act in a way that reflects these values. We need a certain number of people to operate the breakfast and lunch sessions effectively. Please let us know in advance if you are unable to attend your session. This will give us time to organise cover so that we can ensure a high quality and consistent service to clients. By volunteering at The Passage, you are agreeing to act as a representative of our work. We expect you to be friendly towards clients, but please do keep the relationship professional. Do not give out your own or other people's personal details. It is likely that clients will ask you questions that you don't know how to answer. In these instances, please find a member of staff to deal with the inquiry. When volunteering at the passage, you may be told or overhear information about clients. We ask you to keep this information to yourself. 
If you are worried about anything you hear, please report it to one of the chefs or to another staff member. In the rare event that an incident occurs in the restaurant, we ask that you make your way back to the kitchen if you are not already there. We take your safety very seriously and any incidents will be reported, investigated and the appropriate action taken. You may be asked to provide information for incident reports. You are welcome to take breaks from the kitchen but please do so considerately. Volunteers can eat for free and we would encourage you to eat your meal with the clients in the restaurant. If you would prefer, you can also use the volunteers room but please do not eat your meal in the kitchen areas. Please don't take a break during busy periods and try to make sure the majority of clients have eaten first. Breakfast finishes at 10 and lunch at 2. Please make sure you tell the chef you are leaving. Return your parcel and apron and retrieve your belongings from the volunteer room, but don't forget to sign out. If you need us to help contribute towards your travel to and from the passage, have a chat with Claudette and Nord to find out how to go about this. We will need to see proof of your travel, whether it's a day pass or an Oyster card printout. We are avid fans of the notice board. Please look out for information and various sign-up sheets around the kitchen area throughout the year. If you need to get in touch with feedback or about anything specific, please contact us on the emails and phone numbers displayed here.